Well, good morning to the Delaware BlackBod Users Group, affectionately known as Debug from now on. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for inviting me to speak to your group. And David, I want to thank you for your efforts of putting together such a, a cool thing to do for organizations in your area. Um, let me start by just putting up some info about myself in the event that after this hour of tutorials, there's any questions that you might have that you can contact me. Uh, to start with, my website is razorsedgeforrookies.com. If you go ahead and write that down. Also, if you go to my website and you need to reach me, you'll see this button that says contact us. Click it and then on the bottom, you'll see all of my contact info. So you can reach me by phone, by email, however you like. One other thing to keep in note, if you like the tutorials and the things that you see over the next hour, um, I invite you to come either follow me on Facebook. You know, we have a Facebook account, a, tw a YouTube account, and a Twitter account where I put up a lot of tips and tricks and things that uh, are sort of pertinent to that time of the year. So I would invite you to come uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel or friend me on Facebook, that kind of thing if you happen to use those social media. So with that said, uh, let's get started into the very first tutorial that I'm going to be covering today, and that is how to use a dashboard. Okay, so for our first tutorial, we're gonna take a look at the dashboard in Razor's Edge. Now, if any of you who use Razor's Edge use your homepage uh, any free, with any frequency, you actually have a little bit of experience with how to run a dashboard. From my homepage, you'll notice that it's broken down into two sections. You'll have the favorites and the action reminders. Now, if you look at these, you'll notice next to them, they have these options to collapse or expand the panel, right? You see how this is? Like, look down below where I'm uh, highlighting my action reminders. You'll see where it says collapse panel, and I can turn it into a bar. And the same thing over on the right hand side of the bar, I have the option of resizing the panel <clears throat> so I can fit two side by side. If I wanted to zoom in and make the panel the full screen, I can click that icon right there or go back by clicking the uh, same icon. In essence, what I'm doing is tweaking and adjusting a panel. Now, if I wanted to modify the properties of what I'm looking at on a panel, I can hit this little icon. It's the same as a records property icon on the top of a constituent record, all right? So, now that you've had a quick look at it on the home page, let's go to the dashboard and you'll see sort of how you can set up and create your own customized dashboard. Now, one thing to keep in mind Dashboard is more or less something that is used by people who aren't so much looking to do day-to-day -day number entry, but would like to see numbers on a live, uh, continual basis. You might have a development director that wants to see recent gifts, or maybe you want to see a breakdown of the funds of what's come in for the course of the year or a quarter. Uh, the dashboard is just sort of a quick way for them to get numbers without you having to go generate a report and actually bring it to them on a regular basis. So from an empty dashboard screen, what we're going to do is we go to this button here where it says customize. You see that? And now <clears throat> you can rename your dashboard. I typically just put my name, you know, like Reese's dashboard, pretty simple. Well, let's take a couple uh, uh, suggestions about what to put over. You see we have an available panels selection and then we have selected panels. Now on the left hand side what I'm going to do is scroll down and maybe grab a recent gifts list. You see that? And when I move it over to the right with the add button, uh, what it will now do is create a panel with the recent gifts. Now I'm not done just by moving it over. I actually have to adjust the properties of a recent gift to show or filter out the gifts that I do or do not want. And the way I do that is by hitting this edit button. You see that right there? So when I click edit, it's gonna give me this dialog. Now I can change the name. I could just make it say recent gifts or whatever I wanna call it. But this is the important part, the date range. So if I wanted to see gifts for just a week, I would say this week, I can do last week, this month, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, I'm just gonna do for last calendar year, just so you can get a, a snapshot of what this thing can generate. Also, I have the option of saying, do not show gifts less than. Now this is handy if you are, say, a development director, and you're only dealing with people who give, say, 50 or $100 or more. So in my case, I'm just gonna, as, a, as an example, I'll put 100. So you're only gonna see gifts that are $100 or more. Now, underneath, you have the ability to filter 
uh, gifts out of this. Now, right now, you'll see where it says constituents to include, constituencies to include, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They all say all. Um, and right now, under gift types to include, if I wanted to change any of this, I would just check the button to the right of it where it says select. So in case uh, in this, maybe I want to remove any gift and kind donations or other. Uh, so I can come over here where it says select, click it, and now it gives me the option of just unchecking the gifts I don't want to include. So in this case, maybe I'll remove the gift and kind, I'll remove the other, uh, and I'll leave it like that. I'll maybe include planned. You never know. If you have the planned giving module, what the heck, right? Okay, so I say okay. Now down on the bottom is another feature. So I can say uh, columns to include. Right now it's showing gift date and constituent name. Well, if I click that select button, I can add some additional fields that are probably valuable. I want to see maybe the amount, maybe I want to see the fund and the appeal, etc. So, and maybe a gift type. I mean, I want to know if it's a stock or if I want to know if it's cash, right? So I say, okay, now when it's all said and done, now remember, all of these buttons are customizable. So if you wanted to say, show only gifts from certain appeals or uh, gifts from certain campaigns, maybe it's the capital campaign you're doing for your organization, you just want to see capital gifts, this is where you would set up the filters for it, okay? But once you're done and you say, okay, um, click the OK below it and you'll see that it will now go generate the panel. <clears throat> and just like we had on our homepage, we have the ability of reshaping it. So I can expand it, I can collapse it, et cetera, et cetera. You see how this works? And from the panel itself, I can scroll up or down, take a look at the GIFs. And one of the other things you can do is in the event that, you know, this is something you'd use to call or to say thank you to the people who made these donations, what you can do is come over to the left-hand side and actually access the gift or the constituent record right from the panel. So if I wanted to see Benjamin Connor's record, I could just click it right from here and it would go jump open to Benjamin Connor's record. And then I would be able to make a call if I wanted. I can put some notes on his record if I made a call or some people would use the actions as a way to track calls. I typically suggest using notes and we'll get into that a little bit later. I'm gonna show you a little uh, trick about notes. And then when I say save and close, if I wanted to see the physical gift itself, this 375 cash gift, I can come here, click the gift date portion and it will actually open up the, the gift that I'm looking at, okay? Okay, so we have put one panel on our dashboard, a recent gifts list. Let's go try to put a second panel, something more analytical that a lot of, uh, you know, people in the positions of development director and things like that would probably want to see on a regular basis. Um, the way we add more panels is just like we added our first. We go to the customize button. So from there, we're going to get our dialogue, which is going to bring up our available panel list and the selected panels. So um, let's pick, say, an appeal analysis. So what I'm going to do is scroll down. We'll grab the appeal summary. Uh, I'll use the add button to pull it over to the selected panels. And from here, just like we did with recent gifts, I'm going to go click the edit button to bring up the properties itself. Uh, when you are, some of the reports that you pull over will have the opportunity of doing things in addition to something like a table. You can do a table. Uh, you have sometimes the option of doing a graph or a table and a graph. Play with it on your own. It might work for you better. Some people are more visual. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the table format just to show you what it's like. Um, now for the appeals to include, what I'm going to do is grab my 2011 appeal. So I'm going to go uh, find all my previous appeals for the previous year. So this is just to give you an example. I don't really have gifts for the 2012 season yet. And so when I say find, you'll see here are my three appeals that I did for the 2011. I'll move them all over with the double arrow. And from here, I'll say, okay. Now I have the ability of excluding or including gift types. You'll see it here, it's cash stock, gift in kind, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the date range too, you can uh, filter by month, by, you know, just like you did with the recent gifts. In this case, I'm going to say last calendar year. I want to see the entire year. And now... Underneath where it says columns to show, um, if you hit the select button, you'll see that you actually have a lot of really cool analytical data that comes back when it comes to an appeal. So I would just go right to the shortcut where you say check all. Uh, all of this data is something really good for you to be able to see. So you say okay. And now when I say okay, what's going to happen is I'm going to actually create this now 
and it's going to go generate and create the data by pulling all of the properties we chose for our panel. Now the appeal summary uh, is one of those things that you might actually want to make bigger than your screen, uh, meaning that it might be long enough that you want to actually expand it. And so let me show you how this looks. If I expand it and it takes up more than half of this space, you see what that looks like. <clears throat> One glimpse at it, now when you go back and do this on your data, if you're missing sections of like what your goal is or what the amount received or what your variance is, it means that your appeal doesn't have all the data filled in. So for instance, if you're not keeping track of expenses of your appeal or you don't know uh, how many people it went to, those kind of things, then these numbers that you get back, like what percent responded, what percent donated, that kind of thing really gets skewed. So to make adjustments on an appeal, you can actually just click right on the appeal itself. And if I were to click it, it will open the appeal. And from here, I can modify the goal, or if I had expenses that I failed to put down before, I can go to the expense tab and add them down below. Uh, this is all sort of elementary. I'm hoping that you guys know how to do uh, modifications of an appeal, that kind of thing. All right, so with that said, that is another panel. Now, if you could build these two panels on a dashboard, you pretty much can build any panel on a dashboard. So I'm gonna, we'll just stop from there because of time and go try it on your own systems. And if you have any questions of what I've shown you, feel free to contact me either after the class or at another time. Okay, well, let's move on.